<laughs> Dream Girl was, by design, an absolute product of Jerry's imagination, written in a feverish two-month period in which he had cut himself off from all stimuli to prove that novelists didn't have to embed or research every arcane detail of some tiny plot point in order to be relevant. A novel written on a computer, but an old one, without internet access, under a cross-stitched sampler made by his first wife and inspired by the last lines of Eudora Welty's memoir. Serious daring starts from within. Dream Girl was what Jerry took to describing, in interviews, as an inside job, delighted by his own wordplay, the implication of a crime, but within one's own mind. I stole a moment and created a life. He declined always to describe that moment. Yet so many people wanted to believe it was on some level true that Jerry Anderson had been saved by a 72-hour romance with a younger woman. They hated learning that Aubrey was not real. Then again, readers hated being told that anything in fiction wasn't real. Aubrey had never existed. So who had written him from Fate Avenue? He drifts off. Sleepiness is a side effect of oxycodone, but it could be boredom as well. He should be writing. Then again, what better reason not to write than recovery from a major accident? The phone is ringing. Where is Aileen? Why won't she answer it? He picks up, assuming he will hear a warning from Baltimore Gas and Electric. Hi, Jerry. It's Aubrey. I wanted to check on you, make sure you're okay in this storm. Who is this? Aubrey, Jerry. Are you okay in the storm? Do you need anything? I have your number on caller ID, and I am going to report you. This is harassment. This is... She laughs. And damn if the laugh doesn't sound like Aubrey's, as he described it in the book. A laugh that was never laughed in ridicule or unkindness. Anyway, I'll be coming to see you soon. So, if you do need anything, let me know. How could I... But she is hung up. 